Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So you've seen this mill on the channel before. This is me, Beaver Mill. I bought it specifically because it has more space between the bed and the quill. I've got a job that's come in where I either need to tip the head 90 degrees on its side or I lift the whole lot up by uh, making a bigger riser block. And I'm thinking a bigger riser block will be useful anyway for future jobs. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a bigger riser block for it. You can see it's got a four inch block in already, but it's still, I can't remember how much gap there is at the moment. So I have like 480 mil in there at the moment. And by the time you've got your boring head in there and a tool and whatever, you, whatever you're doing, you still don't have a great deal of space. So you can buy riser blocks. They are a thing you can get four inch ones six inch ones and eight inch ones i think and that has a four inch one in at the moment i find one that will fit will be quite difficult um and i sort of need it for next week so that's why i'm going to make one instead so i think what we'll do first is we'll take the top off and then take the block out and see what's what in there i've never had one in bits before so i don't really know what's involved with any of that lot Right, so I've got that lifted off there and you can see it's on a turntable. So this turntable is bolted onto the riser block and the riser block is bolted onto the top of the frame. So I'll lift this just the other side of there so that I can get in here without the risk of that falling on me. Can't go too far because the wire is still connected. So that's the riser ring, I've got it off now and there's actually not much to it. I thought there'd have been some machined like shoulders on it, but there's nothing, it's just two flat surfaces. The only thing that's, so that'll be easy enough to make. The only thing that'll be tricky is getting all the bolt holes in the right place. There's two sets of bolt holes on this side and on that side there's only one set of bolt holes. When you look on the top of the mill, there's no shoulders or anything on there either. So I thought there would have been. No dowels either. I think what I'll do is I'll plasma two 15 mil rings out, whatever diameter that is. I don't, it doesn't need them notches out, I don't think. Don't know what they're for really. Um, I might put tabs in it as well and then plasma out some of these uh, like braces and then they'll be tabbed together. Just might help. Help me line it all up when I put it together and then I think I'll roll a ring, six mil ring or so around the outside to, to join between the two plates as well. So I've just quickly drawn this up in on shape. So that's like the base plate or the top and bottom plate. And then that'll be what joins them together, like the braces on the inside and I've put tabs on them so they should all slot together. That's what it'll, I've just put one in, but they'll slot together like that. Then I can weld all that up and then uh, once it's all welded up and a ring round the outside I'll roll the ring to fill this cap in and then I can drill all the holes after and skim both sides as well so it's completely flat on both sides. Right so I've got some plates set up on there now, some 15 mil plate. I'm not quite sure how it's going to perform cutting them tabs out because generally you're not supposed to cut a hole smaller than the plate thickness. And that's 15 mil plate and a 14 mil square hole. Anyway, we'll see how it gets on.
So that's them two rings cut out as expected. <coughs> them holes, they didn't cut out great on the underside, but on the top side, um, they're fine. So I just won't make them as deep. So they only go in sort of five or six mil. And that'll be enough to line them up. So I'll bring some steel in now to cut them other bits out. So I'm cutting them out of 150 by 12 rather than 15 because you look in there, they're quite thin and there's a hole there and a hole there. I know I could move where the holes are to make them further away from that, but it just makes my life easier if I can do it exactly the same as what this is. So that's why I'm doing them out of 12 instead of 15. So that's all them cut out and it seemed like they're gonna fit in there quite nice. So uh, I did did like a little um, extra radius on the corners and then the same on these. So they should fit in better. So I'll give them a clean up and then we can start putting it together.
So that's all that tacked together now. Uh, it went together quite well. And then uh, tabs, uh, squared it a couple of times round about to make sure it's sort of true with the bottom one. Squared them up. Not too worried because it'll all be getting machined anyway, as long as it's somewhere within a couple of mil of each other. So what I want to do now is roll a plate to fit in here to make it smooth on the outside like the originals are. So I'll have to roll a bit of either five or six mil and then once that's rolled I can weld it all together. So that's that strip plasmaed out that's to roll to go around there. But I think I'm going to put a couple of presses on the end of it first because when you're rolling like there your rollers that I'm going to roll it in between the centre of that roller and the centre of that roller or whatever that distance is there doesn't get rolled so I think I'll press a couple of presses on either end just to get started and this is a little bit longer than what I need and then once it's rolled I'll chop it off at the end and make it match that and to find the length of that you just do your diameter times pi gives you your circumference So I think that should about do it. We want 355 and we've got 350. Spring back a little bit. So I think I'll make that do. So that's that out, sat on there now. I need to decide 
where I'm going to cut and join it, whether I cut all of one turn off and leave half the other or whether I cut down the middle, I'm not sure. Uh, with it being six mil as well, it's not very, not very easy to manipulate it. So I'm gonna have to open it up to get it over the top of there. Might have been easier to put this on before I, well, before I put the top ring on, but it should open up enough for me to get it over the top of there. I've got it sprung open a little bit with a jack. It's just that bit there now. So if I chop that off down there, then that should drop over there. Shouldn't have distorted it. That should just be the spring in the steel. So that is that over the top of there now. So I think what I'll do is I'll tack it. In some places it's it's out further than it is in other places. So what I'll do is I'll tack it there and I'll work my way around, pull it in so it's flush. And then when I get round to this end, I'll have a bit more to cut off. See, there's a bit of an overlap there still. So I'll, I'll follow it round and then chase that overlap out and then chop it off and then tack that together. Should have done maybe as well. I got a bit carried away. Uh, I should have ground a, a bit of weld prep on onto this first, but I can get it all tacked in and then I can tack it on the inside and then run the grind around and put a bit of a groove in it to fill with weld. So that is all tacked round now. Um, that's where the joint is. So there's a few places where it's a bit proud, a few places where it's a bit low, but the overall diameter is slightly bigger than it needs to be. So I'm hoping once I've got it all welded up, I can put it in a lathe, um, machine the flats, and then turn the outside diameter down as well. So then it, hopefully it'll all look like it's just one lump. So I think I'll weld it up now. I'll weld around the inside first and then I'll grind them out and then get a nice run of weld all the way around down there and then fill them in as well probably.
Right, so that is that all welded up now. So I welded all around on the inside. I haven't welded all these all the way down, but I've done sort of an inch in the corner all the way around and then all the way up around them. I welded around the outside. I've ground that flat again just to do away with the high spots. So when I put it in the lathe, there's no high spots I weld to machine down first. So yeah, I wait for that to cool down and then I can put it in the lathe. So I've got that set in the lathe now. Um, I won't be able to turn all of the outside down because it's touching there and that's as far as I can get. The tool post is as far as it will go on its slide. And that's up to there. So yeah, I'm going to have to do half and half. Skim half now and then turn it around. But you know, I can do this side. I'll do this side, maybe bore that true as well and then turn it over, do the same on the other side and then turn outside down as well. So nearly there, another half mil, I think that'll do. So I've taken the mil off so far. So I've got that turned down. I think we're about down to size, but I don't have a, a micrometer or a set of calipers big enough to measure this diameter. So I'm just sort of going off measuring with that and with the tape measure. But it doesn't, doesn't need to be that precise. Only thing is, we've got a little bit of a low spot there. But I think I'm gonna to have to live with that. Uh, and I also don't want to take much more off because we're taking thickness away from this side. Doesn't really matter too much because all the strength is in these bits here. So yeah, I think that'll do. We'll put a bit of chamfer on there, and then we'll turn it around and do the same on the other side.
So I've got that clipped round now. I've got it set up with a dial gauge. I might just give it another couple of whacks just to fine tune it. It's in with like 0 0.03 of a millimetre. So yeah, I'll maybe just fine tune that a little bit more and then we'll machine it. forgot to say as well, I've put a new DRO on the lathe. Makes this job a lot easier now. I've got both axes that work. On my old one, only one axis worked. Anyway, that one packed up, so I thought I'd put a, put a new one on. It's only a cheap Chinese one, but it'll do what I need it to do. Right, so that is all the machining done. Put a chamfer on there, chamfer on there, chamfer on there. Yeah, and take that out now. So that is that all machined up now. I'm quite pleased with how that went. Went quite smooth, did that. Feel a little bit of a difference where the two sides are, but that doesn't matter. At least I know that them both, both them are nice and flat and true. So that's that bit done. So now I need to transfer these holes onto here. Now I've had a measure and it would actually fit on my rotary table back in the milling machine but then I've got to put the milling machine back together with that blocking to be able to fit it in to, to drill the holes so I don't think I'm going to do it on the rotary table. I could, I could lay this on here and use a transfer punch and transfer them through. The trouble is they're blind holes so I wouldn't be able to mark them on. I'd only be able to do these ones but what I realise is this ring has both sets of holes in it and it has the degrees around the outside. What I think I'm going to do is if I score a mark down there, lay this on with zero on the score mark, centralise it up, send, uh, transfer punch them through, turn it over, lay this back on again with zero on the scribe mark and then mark them back through and then we should be right then. You look on here, them holes are in line with them holes. So if I do it like that, it should work. So that's them marked with the where's the scribe mark? With, yeah, with the zero on the scribe mark. So I've marked all them. So I'll turn it over now and do the same, just with the inside holes. So I am just having to line that up by feel and by sight because this new ring that I've made is slightly smaller diameter than, uh, than this, but I can't see that being a problem. So yeah, that's them marked round. 
so we need to drill them now. So these inner holes on this side just need to be drilled straight through where both sets of holes on the other side need to be drilled and tapped. That's all them drilled and tapped, and I put a little countersink on them. So now I've got to tap them. My all time favourite job tapping holes. Yeah, I was being sarcastic there in case you didn't realise. So I think I'll get them all started in the drill just so there's a few threads in them, and then I'll take it out and clamp it to the bench and then finish threading them by hand. So I've already done that one. Right, so I made a bit of a balls up here. So these holes, they're all in bolts fit. Obviously these holes are not in the middle of them holes, they must be offset. Because when I've come to put them bolts in, every one of them is like quarter of a hole out. I was thinking I could just turn this lot over and then just drill another six holes and tap them, but I've drilled them out. They're drilled out 10.2 mil for a bolt to go all the way through and these are drilled out at 8.5 and tapped out to M10 so I can't turn it over and uh, and just drill another set of holes. Well I could drill a complete set of new holes on the whole thing but then 
I'll do the job all again. So what I might do is fill these holes in, fill them in with weld, put it back in a lathe, just skim this surface off again. And then I've just got six holes to re-drill and tap. And that's probably the best option, maybe. My job's never simple. You'd think that them holes would just be in the middle of them. But obviously they're not. I've got them filled in now, um, I put it back in the lathe and skim it flat. The reason why I had that upside down is because when it's the right way up, the numbers are at the top, so I put it on upside down and it was easier to get zero onto my line, but yeah, anyway, I'll soon put it back in the lathe, skim them off, and just re-drill and tap them again. Right, that's that skimmed flat again now. And holes filled in so I'll sit that on the right way up this time bolt it down transfer punch holes through and say again drill and tap them all right so we're back and sorted now they're drilled and tapped hopefully in the right place so I'll put that on make sure it fits it took me about an hour to sort that out so it's not too big not too much of a balls up So that's them in, they all line up properly now, so that's good. I've just sat it onto the old riser block as well. And the bolts all line up, so that's good. I haven't tightened them up, I've just got them all in. So if it fits on that, it'll fit on the mill. So I think I'll give it a clean up now and then I'll just give it a spray of red oxide to stop it going rusty. Right, so that's that job done. I'm not going to fit it in the milling machine yet because I've got a job coming up where I'll either need both blocks in or neither of the blocks in. But I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do yet, so I'll leave them out for now. Apart from the little balls up with the bolt holes, that job went quite well. Should be a lot better now when I can get that extra extra 100 mil over what I could get already. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Where my TM came from, with Edgecutter.